I had all this footage from basically June of last year until now of just like, I didn't know how I wanted to bring it up and I didn't know how I wanted to talk about it. And I just didn't, like I had all these questions and I didn't know how I was feeling. And then I realized that like, <laughs> I am not a Kardashian. <laughs> like y'all don't not y'all don't need to know like all these things <laughs> and honestly i think it was really good for me to like process a lot of it alone if that makes sense essentially um i remember that person who i was talking to last year and it ended kind of abruptly and i was super sad and depressed and like tragically just heartbroken over the only thing that y'all really need to know is that i am talking to them again and that i am happy and that i am also struggling <laughs> if you watch me talk about any of my past relationships or past dating or whatever. So when things are like normal between me and somebody else, it's still not normal because like I'm in my head and we're just, there's like the bullshit and then there's like the normal bullshit. And now we're just, we're back to the normal bullshit, which is like good, but not really that great. Basically, I know this person that cares a lot for me. I know that they do. It's very evident and it's shown. But why does my brain tell me that they don't? <laughs> like, ugh, and it's so serious sometimes. It's like so dramatic for like no reason. It's kind of hard to describe. Um, but essentially, this person pulls on a lot of my triggers and I have a lot of trauma responses based off the behaviors that they do. So this person engages in behaviors and does things most times indirectly. Like most times it's not like on purpose, it's not malicious, it's not any of that. But bitch, we feel like it's malicious and it hurts. It like they they're not doing anything directly to us. They're just living their lives. But like I'm over here petrified at times and it's like I just go through it. Essentially, I'm torn between this person does certain things it affects me like in a very negative way to the point where I'm having panic attacks. And I want to tell this person about their actions and about their behaviors and about what triggers me. But how do you tell somebody what triggers you or ask somebody to like change their behaviors when almost everything they do triggers you? <laughs> That's the problem. So when I say I'm trying to figure out what I'm supposed to be doing slash what's supposed to be happening, it's more so like, okay, what it, where is the fine line, or there is a very fine line, and what is the balance between me having them walk on eggshells around me because every single thing they do might trigger me, or me confronting them, being very transparent, very clear, communicating with them and asking them to change. Like, you can't ask them to change everything. So one of the biggest things that I'm struggling with this person is, and I, it sucks because I don't want to struggle with it. I don't want to care, but it, I just do. Um, they work a lot. Work is a huge thing for them. Um, like we just, our schedules are crazy. We don't have the most time throughout the weekdays to talk to each other. And when we do see each other, we're going to bed. <laughs> so our time is very valuable and very precious, at least to me, when we're together. Most times, unless it's a special occasion, this person will explain to me, not, not give an excuse, explain to me that they can't come over to my place or they can't see me, they can't hang out, they can't whatever because they're too tired and they have to get up early for work the next day. Very true, very reasonable. I totally understand on the surface. <laughs> for instance, a good example of what I'm struggling with is that, let's just say it's an evening or whatever, or it's nighttime. They just got off of work and they'll say, Hey, just got off of work. They might call me. Just got off of work. How are you? How's your day? But the conversation will only last literally for like six minutes, right? And it's just kind of like a check-in. Like, I just got off of work. I'm headed home. Blah, 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 blah. And after six minutes, short conversation, they'll end it and they'll say like, I will talk to you later. I will text you. I'm headed home. I'm going to eat dinner. Like, and I'll like, I'll text you. <laughs> for whatever reason, I get so upset by this and so bothered by this. It might have been a whole day of not talking to them because they've been at work or they've been working. They, you know, it's been a full day of just not talking to them. And that has already had me on edge um, for whatever reason. Like subconsciously, the trauma is like on the edge. Like, why aren't you talking to me? 
do you not have any second like blah 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 blah. So that night, you know, I'm expecting at least to kind of talk to them a little bit more, get some type of engagement from them because it's been a whole day of not talking to them. Um, but I don't say any of this because I don't want to sound too clingy. I know they're tired. I know, like, I know these things. I'm trying to respect their boundaries, but I'm freaking the fuck out of my mind. Um, but I say, you know what? It's cool. Cool. They're going to talk to me. They're going to text me. They said, cool, 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 cool. I don't hear from them. Typically, I don't hear from them. From the time they get off of work until right around their bedtime, don't hear from them. And then they do eventually call or text me and it's to say goodnight. <laughs> so in my mind, I'm thinking like, okay, you have not talked to me all day. Fine, fine, fine. I'm not going to be mad about that. Um, then you do call me for six like minutes just to say like, I'm going home. Then you say you're going to text me. You're going to call me when you get home. And I'm thinking it's going to be an actual conversation, but it's not. Um, it's just you then call like around 11, 12 saying goodnight. So in my mind, it's like, I'm struggling between number one, I don't want to sound needy, even though I'm needy as fuck. Number two, in a normal world, or if I was a normal person, I probably would just tell this person, hey, I would like to have longer conversations with you. Hey, like when you get off of work, like I would just say, express my, dis my, my, my displeasure. But, for, I can't, but I can't do that. Because I'm struggling with the idea of, is that weird to do? I'm not sure if I'm supposed to do it. I'm not sure if I'm not respecting their boundaries. Like, I don't want to come off as too needy. And it's, it's less about me appearing needy. Like, I'm a needy person. This person knows I'm a needy person. But I don't want to be unhealthy. Like, I, I just don't want to, like, have to be, I don't want to be unhealthy, you know? Does that make, does that make any sense to y'all? Because I just said that out loud and it's just like, <sighs> What? Um, I'm bringing this all up because let's just say the next day after, you know, this person has gone to sleep, sometimes they don't even call me back or they don't follow up with a goodnight text. They don't say anything. It's just radio silence because they end up falling asleep. And my message is left undelivered, you know? So obviously in a mood because of that. But then the next day will come. It will progress. The morning will happen and it'll be afternoon. And it's like I still have not heard from this person. And it's not the fact that they didn't say anything. Like they don't have to keep in contact with me 24-7. That's where the unhealthy part, I don't want it to become unhealthy in that way. Like, I do not believe that this person needs to keep up with me. Let's, this person does not need to tell me when they're going to do something new every single time. Like, no, it's not. Like, I don't care. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. But my body does want that. <laughs> and I don't know why. And when it gets to that point or when, these time, when there's times like this, like, when this happens, I also feel and I think like, okay, well, uh, you must not miss me because... I'm over here missing you, I miss talking to you, and I'm thinking about you, but at no point last night, well, I guess you called me for like three minutes, but I guess that's as much as you miss me. Like, it equates it with my worth. Like, you only miss me this much, and that's why you're not talking to me. Because we've gone all night, barely any talking, then this morning happened, like, I know you, everyone looks at their phone, everyone has their phone on them. Like, I know you see my messages, <laughs> or you see my mess, like, I know you, I, I know this, right? And you have not responded, not even with like a, a like or if, like there's just no response. And in my mind, I'm just thinking that means that you don't want to talk to me because you don't care as much as I do. Because like, if you did, you would respond. And obviously that's not healthy. It's honestly, most times not true. Um, but that's where my head goes with it. And I think that's the, one of the biggest reasons as to why I don't bring it up to them because I feel like in other relationships and other people I've talked to, like, I don't have to explain. I've never had to tell somebody what my love language is or show them or, or to let, I've, I've always felt like I've, they, they've cared. Not all the time in the relationship, but for the most part. I've just never dealt with this problem. Um, I don't know. That's also totally a lie. I've totally dealt with this problem before. <laughs> But it's never been this severe, like, so there's the idea of not wanting to be unhealthy, the idea of feeling like I'm too needy and I don't want to be like, you know, toxic as fuck. Um, I feel like if I mentioned this to them and I did bring it up to them, like, <laughs> why am I bringing it up to them when they should just know? Like, it feels like if I bring it up to them, they're doing it because I asked them to do it. They're doing it because I get angry when they don't do this. They're not doing it because they want to. Like, I want you to want to talk to me. I want you to want to hear. Like, I want you to want to make me a priority and all that stuff. And the very last piece of it is, is the theme that we've been dealing with, rejection. I don't want to say it and then 
<laughs> they're like, no, I'm not doing that. Or no, I can't do that. Regardless if it's in a mean or not mean way. Or rather, sometimes, you know, we just can't all, we can't do everything. Sometimes we have to say no. Sometimes we have no choice to say no. So I'm afraid of rejection in the sense that even if they want to say yes, if they have to say no, I'm afraid of that rejection. I'm also afraid of the rejection of them wanting to say no, and they say no. I'm also afraid of the rejection of them wanting to say no, and then they say yes anyway because I was angry. You know, it's just, I get in my mind way too much. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the normal type of crazy I'm talking about, and that's where we are with this, and that's what's been driving me bonkers.